Well, now that I made it up here, I'm going to unload a few things, and the first thing I need to do is walk all the way out to where that that tur trail camera was that we put out, you know, a couple weeks ago. Um, I don't know. I saw some people parked there. I don't know if other people are going to be hunting back there. I kind of want to go in there and see if they cleared any of that trail, and I want to pull that trail camera. It's really nice and 61 outside, but inside here, we're at 51.6. It's definitely chilly in here and you open up that door, it feels pretty nice out. Well, that's all I'm going to haul in for right now. I do have to run out and grab the uh, SD card out of the one trail camera because I want to be able to take that one and just switch it out with the one that's way out there if I decide to leave that camera. So anyway, uh, I'll go do that and I'll be right back in. Well, it's only been a couple of weeks so there wasn't a whole lot of pictures. Uh, my brother John was up here and with his friend Todd and they were up here with my dad doing some work over on the Backwoods cabin. And I do see that uh, there was a red fox up on the front porch. So we'll go through these in detail a little bit more later. Right now I just want to get out and make that long walk. I think I'll leave the door open, just keep the screen door closed, maybe it'll let some heat in. <laughs> Well, here's the spot that we walk in to go way back there and what happened when I was here last time we walked all the way back and I come all the way out and nobody has hunted this I've watched it for a couple of years anyway uh, the next day I'm grouse hunting and I drive by here there's a truck sitting here two four-wheelers and one of the four-wheelers has a trailer on the back well if you're all grouse hunting you don't have a trailer on the back of your four-wheeler you do that when you have chainsaws and stuff like that so I imagine that somebody else is going to be hunting back in here uh, which for me it's I wouldn't be able to sit out here then on the opening weekend but all the hunters usually are here for that first weekend maybe through Tuesday and then they're gone I'll be up here every weekend so anyway I want to get back there I want to see how far if if they've cleared the trail how far did they go that'll tell me where their deer stands are gonna be maybe they went all the way back and then if they did go all the way back then I'm gonna pull that camera completely so I doesn't get stolen or whatever I don't have to walk back out there when people are hunting and have to get it so anyway I'm gonna put on my backpack grab my shotgun and uh, let's head back Well, this is what happened. Now I come in, and you come in, I don't know, maybe a quarter of a mile, and then there's on the left, there's a little road that shoots off, well, you know, this is what I'm calling the road. And there's a clearing area where they probably staged all the lumber 20, 30 years ago when they, when they uh, logged all this off. That's where it stopped. So now I've went back probably another third of a mile. Well, this is that second thick, thick part. You guys remember from last time I was up here. This is the second thick part. So right after this I go right and I can go into that clearing after I'm down that trail. So really they're, they only have it cleared and are only hunting up close to the road. 
I jumped a grouse back there and totally blew it. I wasn't watching, I wasn't thinking. I was looking at the trail and trying to see what was going on and he outsmarted me. Well, this is where the trail kind of wise off and we go this way. So right now we're two weeks and one day away from deer hunting opening and I would have thought along this trail you'd have saw some scrapes if they were starting the rut yet. There's been nothing. Walking into that clearing right now. This is where before where we thought about sitting right up there with the stand and that little bunch of pine trees would block so you could see the deer coming right here. As they walked by these trees, you could get your gun ready. Shoot them right over on this side. Well, there's the camera right there. Unfortunately, I did not bring my card reader with me. It's sitting in the tent. I was in too much of a hurry, so I'll just switch out the SD card and we'll take a look at it when we get back to the tent. Okay, I put a different SD card in there, and I can't, I don't know, there's a little thing that it's hard to read because the lettering is so small, but I think this has 12 pictures on it. But a bunch of those pictures are going to be me because we were walking around in front of this. We just walked up to it, but anyway, who knows? Could be a deer on there. Well, this card actually does have some deer on it. Here I am. This is on the 7th when I was up here last time. There's a, here's a doe here and here's the back of one right there. There's a doe. Let's see. These are same time, 450, 451. That was on the same day that I put the camera up. This is the same day also. There's a doe and a fawn. This now is four days later, a nice doe, it looks like a foggy morning there. Look at that one, it's my first buck I've ever seen on a trail camera. And he's coming, let's see the trail, he's going this way, this is where we come in where we looked, the stand would be right up over here, so he would have about 100 feet to go until, I mean I'd have shot him, I haven't got a deer in a while, that's a little, I don't know, for a Minnesota we would call that a, it looks like a five point. I don't know, it looks like two on one side and three on the other. Here's another doe here that's running off. There's a doe going. And here I am today. So yeah, that's pretty exciting. Two weeks away only. Let's run out and uh, I'm going to transfer these to the computer, empty them off of this card, and then we'll go out to Sarah's stand and we'll pull that one and switch it out with this one. Is where we walk into Sarah's stand but when I was driving out here uh, my dad is up here he drove up this morning to the backwoods cabin or the folks's cabin and uh, he's up here with his the guy that hunts usually up here opening weekend Wayne and they're just doing deer stands well they had just driven through here and where I went into that far stand there where we went in and pulled the SD card out of that camera there was a four-wheeler sitting outside of there, so I thought, oh, maybe that's the guy with the deer stand. So I kept driving and drove past here where we go into Sarah's stand and kept driving all the way down there. And that guy was driving up here, so I stopped and talked to him for maybe 15 minutes or so, 10, 15 minutes. 
And he's not the guy that's hunting in there. He was uh, uh, just grouse hunting, but his name was Steve and super nice guy. He's been up here since a little kid. Not, not, you know, he's on a, they have a cabin on a different lake that's a couple miles from here. So anyway, I talked to him, but I was hoping to talk to the person that had that stand in there because um, then I could let him know that I'm going to be walking all the way past, but I'll meet up with him eventually here. Let's go in and check this uh, SD card. Oh, it looks like it has seven pictures on it. That could ever, that could just be me. But anyway, we'll pull it and I'll put the new one in and we'll check it when we get back to the tent. I'm gonna walk over to Sarah's stand going this way. Let's head back to the tent. So looking at this SD card, this is the day I set it up on the 7th, and this is the next day. It was super foggy, but this in these two pictures I see nothing in, and then this one here, there right there, I can't see if it has horns, it looks like a doe, that's at 608, and 609 it's walking away. So you know, it looks like it's looking right at the camera. Oh, maybe not, that might be the back of its head, because that looks like that's probably the tail. And there it goes off. That's it. So there has been a deer in there, but that was at 6.08 in the morning on the 14th. Now I'm going to transfer these files, and then I'll bring this SD card out. We're going to go pull the one that's on the driveway. I still have to do Zach's, but I'm going to be up here for two more full days, so plenty of time. I'll be back in a few minutes with that other SD card. Well, looking at the driveway one, here's the one deer that came through here. I was actually up here that day. That was last time I was up here, but this camera I leave on all the time. I just switch out the SD card, and uh, this one always stays on. And this one here, I see that little fox. This is, what, 648? 702, is that the same day? It is. And this is later on it's the same thing it always takes a picture of it in the same place that's about all that's on this SD card is just that there was the deer and the fox so that's it well tomorrow we'll go out and I'll pull Zachary's trail cam that's been out there we don't get much on that but I'm actually gonna pull the whole camera this time and if well maybe I'll look at it and see if there's any deer but otherwise I'm gonna pull it and uh, that one has probably been three or four weeks since we looked at that one so it's 10 after 6 right now. I need to get the barbecue going pretty quick here. It is 58 degrees outside and 57 in here, so I need to get a fire going because it's chilly. Still just burning the pine. It won't be long and it'll start to cool down enough and I'm going to want some of that hardwood in here and get some real heat. Uh, it's starting to get dark. I think I'll run out there and grab the cooler, bring that in here, and get the food put in the fridge. Oh, well, this time up, mushrooms, the usual hamburgers. I brought up some biscuits. I, I, I bring these up almost every single time. I never ever make them. So last time I came up I didn't make them. And then after I cooked on the wood stove I wanted to use my Coleman Camp oven and cook these. <laughs> didn't have them up here. Well, got some yogurt. 
Tonight I'm going to make chuck eye steak and some beef. I brought up some chicken thighs and legs. Already seasoned, $3.70. Can't beat that. Um, some smoked white fish. Cauliflower and broccoli. I did have, do have another bag out in the truck with some more canned vegetables, the little, little ones. I brought up another thing of the ham. And broken shrimp, it was called. They were on sale. I thought if I got a grouse, could cut that up and throw it in with some shrimp and some ham. We'll see what happens. And then I brought up um, some of the home-raised, home-butchered pork spare ribs and three chops, and this is an R, so these are like regular sized chops, not those super thick ones. I won't eat it all, but I always like to have more than I, more than I want, because what if I don't feel like having chicken and I want to have pork or whatever, so plenty of food. Here's the other stuff. I got potatoes. I always bring up this loaf of bread and half the time it never gets used. These are the little canned vegetables and mandarin oranges. Some of this stuff, like the fruit and stuff, if I don't eat it, when Sarah comes up for deer hunting, she loves that stuff and it gets used up. So it's now I have to start stocking stuff up for that. And then after that weekend, then everything, uh, after third weekend of deer hunting, everything goes home because it'll freeze over the winter time. Pretty much just doing a standard tent meal. I usually do the first night beef steaks and uh, baked potato and stuff. It's easy. Uh, it's a long drive up here. I try to get a lot of stuff done that first day. Tomorrow is more when I can play around a little bit and have a little bit more time. What did I say these were? They're chuck eye steaks. They look really good. Little Johnny's Hunter's Blend on there. Definitely my favorite seasoning up here. I think I'll have some peas with that. I think I'm just going to microwave those later. I'm not going to bother heating them up out there. I canned butter this week, so now we have eight more half pints of butter up here. That should last me, I don't know, uh, definitely all through this year and almost all the way until next year. Okay, everyone, well, it's dinner time. Okay, everyone, well, it's almost 10 after 10. I'm going to hit the bed. Still have a couple more days up here, and tomorrow's a brand new day. Good morning, everybody. Got about two hours until the sun rises.
haven't walked down this trail yet this year for grouse. Well, I think I'm going to switch batteries in the camera here and uh, grab my backpack and a bottle of water. Let's walk out to Zachary's stand and I'm just going to pull that whole entire camera. Well, I had to make a little detour. Uh, my dad called and he was out there with Wayne and Wayne wanted to get a rock loaded into his uh, vehicle and uh, they couldn't get it in there so it took the three of us to roll it up in there. And now I'm heading back towards Zachary's stand but I think since I want to get some diamond willow this weekend there's some dead stuff that hangs kind of across the road and stuff. I'm just going to cut a few on my way back. Like that right there is diamond willow so I'm going to get some of that chopped up. There's another nice piece that's easily accessible. Well, I got a pretty good amount in there, enough for a while. Well, let's take the long walk out to Zachary's stand. I pulled the camera and put it in my backpack, and now we'll head back. I jump up into Zachary's stand. I was there a couple months ago, but Zach's coming up next weekend, and him and I are going to do some deer stand stuff, so we'll take care of his next weekend. Oh, I don't see any animals on this one. I do see some people. I actually know who these people are, some of them. So, um, yeah, but no animals at all. There's me pulling it today. For about the last half hour, I was just taking care of some work-related stuff through email. So now it's uh, just about 12 o'clock, time to make some lunch. I get quite a few, well not quite a few, but I do get some comments on how come I never show me eating breakfast. I don't eat breakfast. This is the first time I eat during the day is usually at noon. Looks like that refrigerator is pretty cold. Just going to drive down and kind of scout around a little bit in that area that Zachary is thinking about sitting in this year. In this area, I mean, everything is growing up, you know, year after year, but you get all this thick stuff like this. And then there'll be a little 
open. I mean, it's not even an opening. It's not very big, just like this. But uh, you can see the deer have used it. You can see the deer tracks, but I'm always looking for like a, a distinct trail. So I'm just gonna keep walking, see what, see what I can find. You get down in here and it kind of backs up to a swamp. Well, I can definitely see deer tracks here. This is kind of coming out of that swamp area. And then it just pretty much ends. <laughs> this area, like I said, I've been here so many times, just really hard to find a place where you'd want to put a stand. Well, this isn't real far in from where I started, but you can kind of see when you look down there, it's sort of a straight shot open. This isn't very far off the main highway, so this is a, a ways from the tent. There's also kind of a, a easy way to walk right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take and put the trail camera right here on this tree, and I'll just face it down so anything coming from that or that, at least it'll take a picture of it. Because it looks like from there, they probably walk straight through that and probably keep going through the woods on the other side of, well, you can't see it up there, but that little walkway I come in on, and then they can actually go across the highway into the woods over there. There we go. Well, now that we're done with that one, let's run out and take a look at my dad's tripod stand. I don't think we've been out there for a couple years. That's the same area, not the same stand, but it's within 30 feet of the stand that Sarah was sitting in when she shot her very first deer. That stand was right there in that tree, the one that Sarah shot that first deer in. That's where that stand used to be, and that was just one that hung on a tree. And now we got a tripod out here. I can't believe that it is two weeks until deer hunting and it is 76 degrees outside. This is ridiculous. It's like summertime. I bought this thing, I don't know if it was two years ago or three years ago. I've never even opened it to use it. But this would definitely be what I want to use if I end up hunting in that new area. I think this will work pretty good. I might want to build oh, something that sits down here, goes up, over, and down so you can rest your gun on it. That's the only thing that kind of 
kind of sucks about these ground blinds. I've sat in them before and I've shot deer out of them before, but you got, you're shooting freehand all the time because you have nothing to set the gun on. I was looking at this map on Google and right there is where we'll set the ground blind. There's that little patch of trees. But what I didn't notice is I haven't went behind here. Look at there's a clearing all the way back over here also. Well, I talked to my dad for quite a while, and then I talked to Melissa for quite a while, and then I had to talk to the guys at work to see how the jobs went today, and uh, now I need to start the barbecue. It's dark out there. And to get that chicken smoking. I still have it up Diamond Willow from last time I was up here for tonight's smoking and then tomorrow more of the stuff I'm going to do is going to be around the tent. I have uh, a few things I want to get done and one of them is cutting up that new Diamond Willow and getting it stacked up here. I know I was going to do my potatoes differently but it's just too easy to put them on there and make a baked potato. It's going to be nice. I'm going to have some steak from yesterday to bring home with me, some chicken to bring home, and tomorrow if the weather stays good, uh, I'll cook up that pork and I'll have some of that left over too. I was going to cook up those biscuits on the Coleman Camp oven on the wood stove, but it's been too warm today to run the wood stove. I'll probably have to start it maybe later before bed, but otherwise it's too warm in here to be cooking over the wood stove. Well, I have Melissa on Skype right now. I'm going to grab my water and put it in here and take a shower.
Okay, everyone, well, it's time to eat. Mineral will be doing way out here. Where are you going with this? Lieutenant Uhura wears a Bokaya amulet, which I presented to her as a token of my... I just signed off Skype with Melissa. It's almost 20 after 10. I'm heading for bed. I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. It's about 20 minutes after 5. Sounds like it's going to be a windy day. That's a big timber wolf there. Well, it's 8 o'clock. It's kind of windy out, but I think I'm going to drive the loop for grouse before I get going. It seems to be how I start my morning when I'm up here and it's hunting season. Since I'm down here on this end, I think I'm going to run into my far stand here where we cleared that uh, brush and stuff out a couple weeks ago. Just see if there's any more deer sign in here. Haven't been any scrapes anywhere else. Last year at this time there were scrapes on the ground. This is a pretty well used deer trail and there is just nothing showing at all that they're even close to rut. You know it was super windy last night, I might have to take that back. Usually there's a scrape right by this little tree and I'm looking down there and there is some dirt kicked back so I don't know if that's real fresh or if that's real old. I really don't know what stand I'm going to sit in on opening morning. I know that I would sit in this one in the afternoon on opener, but both areas excite me. I've got so many deer out of this one here, it's hard to say no. I just took my machete and cleared out some of the brush here so a person can get in without just to get a little bit farther off the road. And then I put some more reflectors up here. It's really easy to find. I can find this in the dark, no problem. The problem comes in is when we have the snow, you guys have seen it before, where it's hanging off the trees. It's really hard to see anything. And then even these reflectors get covered up because the snow sticks to the trees. So anyway, at least I can kind of see that I've got a spot to park here. Might as well stop over at the folks' place here, the Backwoods Cabin, and take a look at that boardwalk. We haven't seen that in a while.
I'm just going to let this sit out this week and air out. And then when Zach and I come up next weekend, I'll take it down and go put it in its place. I'm just going to shoot uh, my Mossberg Patriot 30 odd 6 here. This is the one I'm going to be shooting. I want to just make sure that it, nothing happened over the year and it's not off. And then I'm going to shoot the 243, my uh, Ruger M77. That one Sarah is going to shoot this year. And next weekend when Zach comes up, he can shoot his um, 30 odd 6, which is a uh, featherweight 30 odd 6 Model 70, so Winchester. All right, well that one is close enough for me for deer hunting. I'm not gonna play around with anything. I can't tell. I think I'm in there. I need to put my boots on. That little 243. If I was looking at this on a big screen, I could see it. I think they're all right in there, but uh, I'm going to walk out there and take a look. I... I would have to say that both guns can't get much closer than that. Well, my dad was just over here for about 40 minutes talking about deer hunting and stuff. And uh, I was going to get the outhouse vacuumed out. I brought up the shop vac, but now it's starting to rain out. And it's just, it's almost noon, so I think I'll have some lunch. That chicken that I smoked last night, that stuff was absolutely awesome. And I used the Diamond Willow when I was up here two weeks ago on that turkey. And I didn't say anything about it because you want to smoke with it a couple times. But that Diamond Willow almost has a... A little bit of a bite and then there's like a sweetness about it and I still can't put my finger on it but that chicken right here that stuff is really good season 4 episode 7 total of 20 seasons it'll take a long time but I'll get through them
nice and clean and cobweb free. Well, that ought to be enough to last me for a little while anyway. Well, it's a pretty crappy day out there, but I'm going to drive right now over by my, I call it the far clearing stand. I want to make sure that I have the reflector eyes on the trees where I park on the side of the road and maybe cut a little bit of the brush out of there like I did down at my far stand. Ah, uh, because you know what hip, what happens if I can't make it up here next weekend for some reason with Zachary, at least all that will be done and this won't take very long. I usually park right in here and I used to have those reflector tacks on the uh, diamond willow but a lot of that has died off now so and this one is really hard to find in the morning. Put a bunch more reflectors in here. So hopefully, sometimes I gotta shine the flashlight out the window to see them. This is where I walk in. And like I was saying on the other stand, if there's a lot of snow that falls, it's almost impossible. just stopped and talked to some guys that hunt down here that I talk to every year. They've been up here for quite a while and they're up here doing stands this weekend with the kids and so I talked to him for a while and they actually have been seeing some scrapes on one of the stands so they're coming into rut. That's exciting. Those are some nice looking home raised, home butchered pork chops there. Look at all that nice fat on them. So tonight what I'm going to do is I have these ribs here. I don't even know what this, 
I guess I've got some spare ribs here. That's a nice looking, look at that. That's nice. This would have been bacon area. <laughs> um, I'm just going to do this with that diamond willow and offset smoke it. I don't know how it'll be, but at least I'll know what the flavor of the diamond willow is into pork. I know what it's like with turkey and chicken now, and I loved it. And it'll be interesting to see how it is with pork. And once again, like I told you, I'm cooking way too much, but this is what I'll eat for the next few days at home also. Well, I have some stuff here that has to be cooked, and I'm just going to add a little bit of ham for some flavor on this, and we'll just uh, do what I do, throw it on there and see what happens. Mushrooms. Cut shrimp. I'm going to throw this on the wood stove and get it cooking. And then after it's getting close to being done, I'm just going to throw these vegetables in there and let them cook in there and just kind of soften up a little bit. Should be good.
And that looks really good. Those ribs still have a while to go, but these pork chops are done, so that's what I'm going to have for supper. They look really good. They smell good, too. All right, everybody. It's time for supper. I might have to sneak in another pork chop. I don't know yet. Well, these have smoked for about four hours. This is going to be tomorrow's dinner. Let's see what they look like. They look really good. I'm not going to be eating them till tomorrow night, but they sure do smell good also. Well, it's 10.32 and I'm going to head for bed. Got a long drive home in the morning. Good morning everybody. I've been up for about an hour and 15 minutes. It's just about 6 o'clock right now. Uh, just uh, made the bed and it's time to get the last few things in the truck and head south. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. It was another fun time up here at the tent. I'll see you guys on the next video.